So in this section, it's probably not going to be as in-depth as you guys wanted it to be about do's and don'ts because I can't really cover everything that you shouldn't do. So basically, we're going to concentrate on general concepts of things that you need to do to ensure that there are no escrow issues. And if you can kind of follow all of these things and do them correctly, then most of the issues should be able to be avoided. So for instance, you should get written instructions on the escrow closing, meaning what's the time, what's the date, what's the split between the agents, is it a loan? All of this stuff that would be captured on the purchase agreement, there could be other escrow instructions that need to be handed down from the parties to the title company so that the title company can actually fulfill the closing. One of the biggest things is staying in contact throughout the steps that are required. So like once preliminary is done, once the payoff's been turned in, once the uh, contingencies have been cleared, what, once all of the money that has, was supposed to be wired in has been received, staying in contact with your client to ensure or with the clients, plural, to ensure that all the steps are being closed or satisfied as we go so that the day of the people actually showing up, there's no surprises, all right? You don't want to get there and go, okay, well, where's your wire transfer? Oh, well, I transferred it four days ago and you don't have it because there was some fraudulent something that happened, all right? So staying in contact with them, which leads us to the next one, is there's a lot of people that always want to paint the rosy picture of the closing. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to pay this. They're going to bring this. We're going to pay the loan off, and we're going to close in 27 minutes, and we'll be done and out of there. Yay for us. Woo well, I think that's probably not something that needs to be considered. There needs to be considered all of the issues in advance so that in case something happens, we could say, hey dude, we're supposed to close in 30 days, providing we can get a good appraisal in. Um, if the appraisal comes back, that could be a, required a second appraisal, which could extend closing or the date. Or there was a problem with the title work, we've got to work through uh, a lien that showed up for the seller that he was not aware of. If those happen, understand that could delay closing a couple days. So giving that realistic picture, not just the rosy picture, could also help reduce any issues because people tend to hear what they want to hear. And all the people hear is you said we're going to close in 13 minutes and I'll be a millionaire. That's all I heard. And now something happens that was unavoidable, like a lien popped up that nobody knew about and delayed the closing that both client, one client or the other, both of them are like, dude, I had timing down to the minute. I'm closing my house at 1253 at 1254. I'm buying this one, yada, yada, yada. Um, sorry, we got problems. Should have had, uh, you know, some uh, warnings in advance. Worst case scenario, that's what I like to talk about. Uh, if you have instructions, you should have drop dead dates. Don't say something like, well, then we get the appraisal in and then we're good. If we get the appraisal in by Friday, we should be able to close of Wednesday next week. Or when we get your documentation and your loan papers in by Thursday, close of business, then we can close, all right? So include dates and times to help hurt those hurdles through there. Um, you might want to include in your documentation what's called an interpleader. Uh, go back to what we just talked about. If the title company is holding earnest money, they want the right to go, you know what, we're going to give the money to the court, let the court decide it out, and we're going to move forward somewhere else. Um, don't forget that uh, to avoid an issue is you should properly disclose all your fees that are going to be charged so both clients understand. They don't get there and think, well, actually it's gonna be a federal law anyway, but you don't want them to show up and go, hey, what's this $5 TIF fee? 
what's this recording fee? What's this courier fee? You know, I, that is $300 in fees no one told me about, which they should have, but that's okay. Your documentation should preserve the several different rights in there. One of them is clerical errors. Hey, we made a typo. Another one might be the right to resign. So you're going to agree to come back in and resign documentation. I mentioned one earlier a minute ago about most title companies now have people sign a document saying this isn't legal advice. So there's all kinds of rights that you want to retain or preserve in case there are some, I'm going to use the word finger quotes for the you at home. I need a bell or something and go bing bing so the people at home know I'm doing finger quotes. Um, lower level issues, you know, hey, I typoed the name wrong. I would consider that a lower level as long as they caught it before they recorded it. All right. So there's going to be. Uh, all of these, so those are all of the things, well not all, those are a good list of things that you guys need to do to make sure that you can head off any issues in the future uh, from either one of the clients. All right, so those are some more items that we're going to talk about or that we talked about in the past. You know, if you have that set of instructions, if you have uh, give them a realistic picture of what's going on, including time frames and drop dead dates and, uh, you know, hey, I need your documents by this date. If you're late, that's going to extend your closing. Nothing's more aggravating from the lending standpoint, and I own a mortgage company as well, when you tell a client, I need your bank accounts and they bring them three days later and then they get upset because, oh, I was told we we're going to be able to close on the 5th. Why is it now the 8th? Because you didn't hit your deadline. You know, I told you bring them in today or by the close of business, we needed them and you were three days late. So um, we're going to talk a little bit more about some other issues that can, that can be found. So stick around. For those of you at home, go ahead and Finish this file out, and for those of you here, stick around.